What's up and good morning guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're jumping back on the mini gooseneck trailer build and let's just jump right on into it. Now here comes the like, in my mind, one of the most important and most like, we could screw things up pretty royally here if we screw this up parts of this whole build. Obviously still got a lot of like strapping in and gusseting and all that, but I wanna get this cut out of the way because this thing's important. So if you guys ever look at, you know, the big equipment, deck over goosenecks that you see on the road, you'll see that they don't just have a straight little you know neck piece coming over into the bed and then it ties into your coupler for your hitch most if not all of them have this nice little turn down i don't know if there's something strength wise involved in like making that little triangular-ish whatever i don't know but there's probably something to it now for what we're doing i don't think it's going to make a huge difference other than aesthetically and i want this thing to look cool and i want it to look basically like a scale version of a gooseneck trailer so you better believe we're putting a turn down in the actual neck before we attach it to the coupler. So I planned for this when I planned out the height of this portion of the gooseneck, knowing that it was gonna be too tall for the coupler to actually reach the ball on the bed. And that gives us plenty of wiggle room for the turn down. So our coupler itself is 29 inches fully extended. And now don't mind the wood, I'll, I'll explain the wood here in a second, but you'll see 29 inches is right there, which is below where that part of the rail is. And remember, 29 inches is max extended. We don't want max extended, we wanna be able to like ride this thing, um, they're two inch increments. So we wanna be at like 26-ish, somewhere around there. That way we have room to go up and down. Now, being that we only got really one shot at cutting the actual tongue here, um, I went ahead and just mocked up a piece of wood because I don't you know, do CAD drawings. I don't have a computer to sit there and like figure out what this angle needs to be. And I only wanna make one cut. So my plan is, and it's what I did here, is I actually cut a piece and we'll show you what kind of on the other side here. Again, to simplify things, so this piece right here, I cut at a 22 and a half degree angle. If we were to do that over there, we then take the piece that we cut off, flip it upside down, and then use that to now create, that's a 45 degree angle, which I think ended up looking like too, too steep of an angle or too sharp of an angle. But that's the plan though, is just make one cut, be able to flip the piece back over, weld it together, and call it good. Over here, we're at like a, 18 to 20 degree angle, which I'm liking this look a lot better. Now what I need to figure out is how far back we need to cut, so how far the piece that's swooping down needs to be, and that's just kind of, again, we're just eyeball engaging, clamping stuff in place, and just trying to figure it out the old school way. So I'm gonna flip this around, that way we have the longer side here. Again, this is the only two by four I had in the shop, so I'm just working with the one piece I have where I would cut this exactly where it needs to be. Okay, that's good enough for now. I think that's gonna look cool. And then obviously we'll cut uh, a plumb cut there. That way the coupler actually weld up to it. Let's see what height we need to be at or wanna be at. So our coupler max is 29 inches. Oof, I almost kinda wanna be lower. I want this thing to stick up a little bit. We almost wanna take it to like there. Add another two inches to it. Now I'm gonna pull back 16 inches. And again, I'm just kinda making this up in my head as I go. So here's to hoping this is actually how this works. We're gonna call that our angle. We'll make sure we're nice and squared up there. That's gonna be our cut. And then I'll use my square to extend that all the way up, but let me mark this side so I know. Same thing on this side, 16 over. Mark it there. Line up our cut for our angle. There we go. done oh like butter like butter that's what I want to see right there guys that's what I want to see okay so now I'm gonna tack these on get everything true back up and centered back up Okay, 
so went ahead, got everything welded up um, and ground down. And so I made a little little template here. It's gonna be our uh, strapping, whatever I've been calling this this entire time. Chris, what's that called? What? That's called a piece of paper. Okay, our piece of paper here, we're gonna use that. Uh, I've already gone ahead and marked out right here on my steel, so we're gonna get these straps cut. Now my welds today haven't exactly been cooperating with me. They're not the prettiest thing. And then I found out um, we were out of welding gas here, so went over to West Air, just got a freshy bottle, and because I'm sick of uh, catching sparks in the face when I'm cutting out all this strapping and stuff that, you know, once I get to where the bandsaw can't reach anymore, I pull out the cutoff disc in the grinder, you know, got like the most safety device thing we've ever had in the shop right here. What, what buddy? Can you get this? Boom, boom. Mount that right there. How sick would that be? In case we see like, this is like the snake getter, you know, if we see any snakes. Now we do need to christen the new face shield here. You guys can find these at workfortapparel.com. As well as this new shirt that I'm wearing. Let's see, let me see if I can show you guys the back. Hold on. There you go. Hopefully you guys can see the back. Time is money. Know your worth. Workfortapparel.com. If you guys want one of these shirts, super sick decals. We should be, don't quote me on this, but we should be by the time this video goes live, fully restocked on all of our flag decals that you guys have been waiting for. So, workfortapparel.com, go check it out. All right, let me swap out of this shirt so I don't ruin it. Dog. What? You spend like $60 with, for the shield and you don't even freaking use it. I mean, you barely need it for the band, so this one we switch over to the cutoff disc. You're unsafe. Does that make you feel better? A little bit. Okay. Let's stand six feet, six feet, man. I don't want to get the wrong, on. six feet. I'm making all the cuts I can with the bandsaw here. Get about as far as I can get, then we'll switch over to the cutoff disc. Just much more pleasant cutting with the bandsaw. Can you hear me, Chris? Hold on. <laughs> much more pleasant cutting with the bandsaw than it is with the cutoff. Dude. That's a pretty sick shirt, man. Thanks, buddy. Where'd you get it? Uh, Workforapparel.com. You got a sale or something? No. Discount code? If you're a channel member, you get a discount code. Sign up for channel membership here on YouTube. Every that's month. A, that's you a get thing? an exclusive, yeah, you get an exclusive uh, discount. Workforapparel.com. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, all I have time for today is just to get this setup dialed in. And my welding hasn't been as on point today as I would like it. So sometimes it's better just to like call it quits and restart tomorrow. But I got both of my sides strapped up there. The front's about as solid as she's gonna get. Obviously, once we get um, our coupler together, we'll gusset this whole area with one big plate. Uh, probably about there or something, I'm not really sure yet. But tomorrow, we jump back on her. Alrighty, so if you guys uh, watched the previous video, or maybe it was two videos ago, when we rescued Papa Rhino's concrete mixture that was abandoned for 20 years, you'll be happy to know she has officially made it out to the ranch. If you guys haven't watched that video, please go back and watch that video. It's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting little story behind this thing. And one thing we actually didn't even mention in that video, um, our Papa Rhino talked about it, but I turned the camera on too late. So apparently, apparently, now who knows how true this is, Papa Rhino bought this concrete mixer from a guy that worked at Whitecap, which Whitecap is a uh, construction supply house. And apparently the salesman there went on to become the lead singer of Stone Temple Pilots, or lead guitarist. One of the, I, I don't know. I don't know, so. Interesting story there, we had no concrete mixer. But I feel like, you know, since trailers have been the theme lately on the channel, we obviously, we got the concrete mixer trailer. We've got another trailer here we can look at to kind of get some ideas. This one's a little more in the style of what we're building, minus the fact that it's not a gooseneck versus my deck over trailer up there. Um, another PJ trailer. Storing this one for a friend for a little bit. So no, this is not my trailer, but just take a little, little look-see up underneath here, see how she's constructed. So one thing you'll notice with trailers, my deck over is the same way, is they basically build um, like a subframe underneath, and then they build the framing for the deck up on top. So you'll see up underneath here, obviously like, all this channel right here, this is used for the decking on top. But the main like strength and girth of the trailer is that lower subframe. We don't have that on my trailer because we're kind of building a small little garden utility trailer to start with, nor did I ever plan on putting anything super heavy on it. But that has led to an issue. I'll show you guys when we get to the shop. But first, let's drop the old concrete trailer here. Now I think it's only fitting for uh, you know Rhino Block and Brick Supply House here that we have an on-site concrete mixer. Never understood this style of hitch, but it's very common in this world here. Now I'm gonna rest her on a block. That way she's easier to pick up and put down by yourself. Once you have it to about this height and leverage 
and the weight is in your favor, this thing's pretty easy to move around by yourself. It's when it's real low to the ground, that's when she's not that easy. And there we go. And since we're up near the dumpster, we'll use this opportunity to clean out the old crew cab here. She is a little bit dirty. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking for updates on Big Walt, who just so happens to be walking by. What's up, Big Walt? Are you just gonna give us a head nod and you're gonna keep cruising? The world wants an update. How's life on Rhino Ranch? Okay, that's good, that's good. Keep on whatever mission you were on a second ago. Alrighty y'all, so we have made it back to the warehouse and I got good news, I picked up a couple more sets of uh, wheels and tires there for the trailer because well, I donated the other two to Papa Rhino's uh, concrete mixer. So, bought two more, I can't really beat the deal. 170 bucks or 160 something dollars on Amazon for two. When I jacked the trailer up to pull the wheels and tires off, you can see I put the jack there on the front axle, which is about not center of the trailer, but close enough to center of the trailer. And I took a step back and I looked at the trailer and maybe you guys can see it on video, maybe not, but you'll see that the trailer actually has a little bit of a bow to it. And just in case you can't see it, granted I only have a four foot level, I could probably put a longer stick of metal on here and it would show better, but about right where that jack is. It's not super extreme, but we gotta beef this up. And I was thinking, you know, maybe I jack up both sides from the middle, weld in some supports all the way across it um, at this angle, having that little arch in it, because if you've ever seen like a flatbed semi-trailer, you'll see that they're not flat. A lot of them have an arch engineered into them, and the reason being is when you put a bunch of weight on an arch, it'll kinda end up flattening out, whereas if it's already flat and you put a bunch of weight on it, it starts to do one of those. Same thing goes with construction. A lot of beams that are put into houses, they're actually engineered with a little bit of a crown in them. So I'm contemplating, either I weld some supports in and just keep this thing flat, because it's not like I'm loading, you know, a 10,000 pound tractor onto this or anything, or, do we do it cool and we actually put that little bit of an arc into it? We'll think about this one for a second. But we did go over to our friends over at JC Metal Supply to pick up some more steel for this thing. And again, it feels like it never ends. It's kind of like Home Depot trips with the guest house. But I got some, I don't know what it's exactly called, but you know, C channel, some channel here. This is what I'm gonna weld down the center to hopefully strengthen that thing. I went C channel instead of square stock because it's about half the weight in my brain. And again, we're, we're at this point, we're trying to save some weight. We also got some more two by four material. Uh, this is only 14 gauge, whereas everything else on here, like the actual structural stuff is 11 gauge or eighth inch. And what we're gonna do with that is that's gonna be our cross members going across here. I might put one down on the center and then something over here. Obviously we don't need it to be as heavy as like the actual structural support as all these are gonna be is just cross members. It's not as important. Also, if you guys would do me a favor, go check out JC Metal Supply on Instagram. I'll put their Instagram right there. Um, I'll put a link down in the description. They've been a huge help on always having the steel that I need in stock as well as all of these supplies to get this whole trailer built. Um, they're a small business, they're family run. They just started a whole new Instagram page and you guys know I'm all about supporting small business. So do me a favor, go follow their Instagram page. It's something free and easy to do that can help support them. All right, so I'm gonna get this other jack up underneath here and let's see if we can kind of keep this bow consistent in the frame. Oh jeez. So we'll make sure we're level side by side. A little bit high on this side, so we'll crank her down just to just scope it. Too much, too much. Let's take her back up. Right. I like it right there. Now let's take a step back, see how we're looking bow wise. I mean she's got she got a pretty big Pretty big arc to her now. I don't know if I want to weld that big of an arc into it, assuming it would actually take. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my channel underneath, clamp it to each bar, and I would assume it would hold this shape. So I went ahead and welded it in with that angle in it. Uh, we'll see when we go to put this thing down. I don't know how strong that C-channel is. Again, I'm no engineer, I'm making this stuff up as I go. Uh, oh, by the way, if you can't hear me, the fan's super high powered because this guy showed up and just pooped himself right now. So uh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta blow that out of the shop. But, you know, I figure 
Worst case scenario, if the C channel's not super strong, the fact that we welded that arc into it means that by the time it flexes just a little bit, maybe we're close to level. Or we go to put this thing on the ground and it keeps that arc. Either way, I'm cool with it because once we put weight on it, um, it's gonna either even out or it's still gonna look cool like a semi-trailer. Now, one of the other reasons I wanted to go with C-channel instead of like square stock is, if you guys have ever seen a trailer that has ramps, usually they'll have like a C-channel something or another up underneath it, like so, let me see if I can get back far enough. And then you take your ramps and you can slide it in underneath. So I have a couple of extra pieces here. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld it alongside here and that'll create a nice little area where we can slide ramps in. They're not super deep, so we have to build the ramps pretty precise to not like fall out of that track. I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna end up building ramps for this thing. It's totally unnecessary, but then again, so is the whole trailer. But at least now, um, you know, when I use up this scrap that I have here, it'll add a little bit more rigidity and we're always ready for ramps should we go to build some. All right guys, so we've got everything welded in place. Um, again, just kind of took the scrap piece I had there. Instead of cutting it down, I welded the whole length that I had. Gives us plenty of room, depending on what length that we decide to make ramps. Again, if we ever make ramps, set it up to this so they could be 16 inches wide, which is pretty dang big for a trailer this size. But we're gonna put the wheels on now. We're gonna lower her down. And we're gonna see exactly how much bow we just put into this thing and possibly regret that we put too much. Oh, and Zach's here. All right, buddy, ready? Let's see, two at a time. Oh, look at that articulation. She's got a little bow to her, but... Kind of, kind of exactly the same. It's just barely, you can see it right at the tail. It's barely got a bow up in the middle, which is, I think, kind of perfect. Go we'll stand right at the tail, because I remember before when we stood at the tail with how much tongue weight there is, it would bend just a little bit. Oh, it's holding it, like even with me on it. Yeah. Oh, dude, we're... we're pretty good. Pretty good, it's got a little flex to her, but. Now, some of you might be noticing a couple of uh, t-shirt changes in this video because, well, I've kind of only had a couple hours here and there to actually be working on the mini trailer. So this is taking the course over the last couple of days here, but that has given time for more parts to show up. So got our jack leg here that we're gonna be adding to the front of the trailer. I wanted one of like the big side ones like I have on my deck over, but it wasn't worth the cost for this situation here. So this one was a little bit cheaper. It's an 8,000 pound trailer jack means I'm gonna have to kind of reach up in there to get to it, but. Now this is an extendable drop leg, or I guess quick adjust, where you just pull that pin right there, the leg drops down, and that way you're not cranking to eat up those like eight to 10 inches of ground clearance that you need with having the jack all the way up. Looking at how big this is though, I don't really do any measurements when we pick this one out, so let's see here. If we just go to put it in the front. Obviously she needs to be high enough off the ground that when she's fully up, which she's not fully up right now, but let's see which way. Let's take her down here. Now this is supposed to be a weld on one, um, which I thought meant it was gonna come raw, but it is actually powder coated. So I guess we gotta grind some of the powder coat off, weld it on. Um, you're supposed to just, I guess, weld it onto the trailer, but. But if we weld this on right now, without fully disassembling this thing, we're not gonna be able to powder coat the trailer. Having this sitting on the front of it and attached. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna weld a plate onto here um, and then use a matching plate on the backside here. And then I'm gonna turn a weld on into a bolt on even though they do offer bolt-on ones, but we're probably just gonna end up making our own bolt-on. So let's see how much this thing actually adjusts. If we pull this pin here. Oh, Jesus, this is pretty cumbersome. All right, pull the pin. All right, so we've got about, looks like about a foot of adjustment there when the pin is out. So what that means is, We get to be at least there, which means when it's cranked all the way up, uh, we'll probably be somewhere around there. I'm happy with that. I think that's, pre I think that's plenty of ground clearance. Um, and we could honestly take it up just a little bit higher if we wanted to. Now, before we get to that today though, we gotta finish up this tongue here. Um, and that means putting in our cross members, albeit we can't finish the actual gooseneck coupler yet, which is driving me insane because the company I ordered it from that said it was in stock, um, lied and it's four to eight weeks out, so I gotta order another one, but finding the right one, is it's, it's been fun. So we're not fully gonna finish this section yet, but at least we can get the rest of it braced. We can get the jack on. We can start doing my steak pockets going down the side. And in other news, because if I don't mention it now, at some point later in the future, you guys are gonna bring them up. Hopefully, um, the two fat scooters are getting sold today. So we've had a good run with these things. These things have been super sick. We've had them at a bunch of car shows or truck shows, I should say. We have a blast cruising around on them, but uh, 
We just haven't been using them. They've been sitting in the shop forever, so it's time to go. So we got a guy that's on his way over here in a little bit. Hopefully he ends up uh, taking both of them and then, you know, look, okay, we'll have some shop space. So to make sure everything here is dimensionally the same, I'm gonna pull my measurement from the bottom there across. That's what I'm gonna cut my top piece at. Whether this is there or not, we're gonna end up ratchet strapping this together to make sure it is the same dimension as that. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and just clamped a couple of two by four chunks on here. That way we can set this thing in place uh, while we ratchet strap this thing together. And let's see how much we're gonna have to close her up. Uh, about a solid three eighths there. She's gotta come together. So probably gonna end up having to take this bar off. Actually, this side might just squeeze in with leaving that on. And let's cinch it together. Oh, okay. That didn't work. I'm on up a little higher. Okay, I think we're gonna call that good enough. We're within, we're within about a 16th there. So um, I'm gonna get my hammer, I'm gonna tap these down. I left these blocks just a hair high so we could tap it into place. And then let's get this tacked in. That bad boy is, oh. Was that a D string, G string, flat E? Now, one of you guys recommended I weld uphill instead of downhill. Um, I think I used to try to go uphill, and then somebody recommended I go downhill. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm going to try uphill right here and see if that is any better for me or if... Uh... It's definitely a little harder for me to see when I'm going uphill. I mean, it's also like right above my eye level. I definitely need more practice if we're going to go uphill. Downhill seems to work much better for me. And just for comparison's sake, um, now I know somebody mentioned like penetration wise, uphill's better. Uh, you know, obviously we're not cutting this open for a penetration test here, but you can see like right there was uphill, right there was downhill. I think my downhill looks better. Also looks more penetrated, but again, I've never really done uphill, so. Cross member is all welded in. I'm gonna wait till this thing fully cools before I release that ratchet strap that is under a ton of tension. So in the meantime, we're gonna run ahead. And, run ahead? Go ahead, go ahead, Chris, good work. Huh. Chris over here testing out our uh, additional supports there. Feels good? No. no, not bad. Not bad, okay. So I'm gonna start making my stake pockets that are gonna go down the side of this thing. And I kind of went back and forth. Should I use uh, two by four material? Well, it's over there, but like that dimension for my stake pocket right there. Or do I use this leftover uh, inch and a half by three material? And I think looks wise and proportion wise, we're gonna end up using this material. It's not like I'm ever actually gonna put anything in it, like stake wise to make like little boards to go around the bed or anything or uh, the uh, trailer. So it's mainly gonna be to put tie downs and stuff in. And this stuff's actually eighth inch thick versus the other 14 gauge that I have left over. So it's probably better we go a little bit thicker. So we're gonna use the inch and a half by three inch material and just cut them into a bunch of little pieces that are gonna go right there all the way down the line. All right, so we've got all of our uh, stake pockets cut here. Got this one just clamped in place. And basically I'm gonna keep them in line with our cross supports here. That way I would assume. What, you okay? Sorry. Oh, okay. That way I'm assuming like that's the strongest part of the trailer. So we're gonna put one there, one there, and then uh, Chris is keeping that spot warm where that last one's gonna go. Okay, stake pockets are all welded on. I thought about adding an extra one over here, but I think they just look way too close together. So I think we've got it right here with three per side. It's not a ton, but it's also not a giant trailer. Now, let's get the fun part here of releasing this strap. Still in tune, still in tune. And then obviously, haven't welded up this side yet because I'm gonna make a cap there. I actually pushed this proud um, just about an eighth inch, eighth to a sixteenth there. That way when I weld this cap on, everything is flush, flush-ish. All right, let's release some tension here. Now, moving along to our uh, jack here. What I think I'm gonna do, again, we're turning a weld on into a bolt on, when I should've just bought a bolt on, is I'm gonna take a piece of steel, I'm gonna cut a plate, 
the same height as this and by six inches. And I'm gonna weld that onto the back of this. And then from there, we'll be able to bolt through the plate all the way through this part of the frame of the trailer. Should be more than strong enough. I don't agree, I don't agree. You don't agree? Okay, Chris, go ahead and let everybody know why you don't agree. No, no. What? You're only gonna do what you wanna do. Chris wants me to get <laughs> one of the boat ones with the big wheel on the front. Everybody's gonna think it's a good idea right now. Watch. If I lived with concrete and asphalt and I could push things around, I would love a wheel on the front. They don't got the off-road for gravel. You know how hard this thing would be to push in gravel with a wheel on the front? I've done it. You've done it? Yeah. Okay. I push my boat around in gravel. For like a foot? Yeah. Here's our little marking here. Three by six. We're gonna use the bandsaw. Let's get this cut out. Are you practicing? Mm -hmm. Or right, you seen how you modify it, put a wheel on it? Okay, okay. Okay, so I've got my plate clamped into place there. I'm gonna use the old jack here. Set it there, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it right now so I know where to grind this paint off so I don't go too crazy grinding too much paint off. But, cool thing about this is I can literally use the jack to set its own height. So we're gonna take it up a little higher here. That way we got plenty of ground clearance. Now again, remember that whole bottom plate sucks up into there. So this thing can actually sit pretty high and we'll be good to go. Okay, so you guys can see where I've marked there with my Sharpie. I've opted to actually put this thing sideways. That way uh, you're not having to like crawl up underneath this too far, flip this way, hit it this way while the truck's like right here. Sideways, it's really easy. You can literally just reach in from the side. Plus um, this little pin right here. It's like it's easier to put in from the side than trying to put in from the front. Now I'm gonna take my die grinder here take off this powder coat or paint or whatever it is so we can weld her up. Got everything clamped in place. Everything is ground down. I'm gonna tack tack. I mean, I guess I could probably just fully weld this thing in place here. all welded up let's clamp her in place here um, obviously that plate bowed just a little bit but once things all bolted together it'll take that bow out we did put quite a bit of heat into it right now now in theory we should be able to uh, take the actual floor check there out from under it and this clamp in place should hold this on tight enough to where we can actually use this I mean I guess we don't need to take the floor check out this thing will just crank it up right there all right y'all well We've got us a tongue jack here on the trailer. She is fully supporting the weight. And again, it's just the clamps holding it on. I'm gonna end up putting about four bolts into this thing, but more than confident this 8,000 pound jack is gonna be just plenty for this booger to work. So we managed to check off a couple more things here. Now I know I said we're back ordered and waiting for the actual coupler on the tongue. That's really gonna hold us up from finishing that whole portion of the trailer, which is at this point kind of the last bit we have to do. But good news is by the next video, uh, we should have all the parts to actually start building the gooseneck hitch portion on the mini truck, which again, I think I've got an idea on how to do it. I don't really know if it's gonna work or we're gonna find out because we gotta do some funky stuff there. But with that, we're gonna wrap up as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, get your thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforwardapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh -huh.